Hey guys, I'm trying a new way of screen recording because my old way is not working anymore. I'm hoping that as I write on this, it's not going to be miserably loud for you, but here goes nothing. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you a few examples of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Um, understand that there are two equations that you need to know um, that we've been over in our, um, our notes already, but I put them on the screen for you here. So the first equation is P plus Q equals one. Very simple, P plus Q equals one. So P, remember that P represents the dominant allele, okay? So your dominant allele, I'm just gonna use A for this. And um, Q represents your recessive allele. So that means that all of the big A's and all the little A's in the gene pool of the whole population have to add up to one or 100%. And that makes sense. And remember that when we went through in the notes, we talked about these are the genotypes, remember? Genotypes. Okay, so this is talking about all of these alleles and all of these alleles. So this would be P and this would represent Q. Okay, so that's how you read that equation. The next equation looks like this. So P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Again, 1 as in a 100%. Okay. So we have the um, homozygous dominant individual, so big A, big A, represents, uh, is represented as P squared. The heterozygous individuals, big A, little a, remember hetero is different, is 2PQ. And then for our homozygous recessive, little a, little a, you have Q squared. Okay, well that makes sense if you think about how this represents our big A and this represents our little a. If you just square them, then that makes sense that you're having two copies of them essentially. Where this one comes in, is essentially saying like if the gene pool was a bag of M&Ms that had two different colors, you can pull a red one first and then a white one or a white one and then a red one. It's the same thing as saying you can have this or you can have this. That's what the two comes from in all of this, okay? Yes, you would never write it this way. You would write it this way, but understand that you can have one allele come first or the other one if you're talking about random chance, which is kind of where Hardy-Weinberg um, thrives, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and dive into a few practice problems. Um, the first one's just basically identification. You will have a couple just identification questions on the exam, and then we'll get into some of the actual math. Okay, so here's the first one. So below is the Hardy-Weinberg equation. So we know that P plus Q is equal to one. So actually this half of the equation like you get it by squaring the first side, okay? So it's just asking what does P squared represent? This is straight memorization. What does P squared represent? Homozygous dominant individuals. So individuals who are homozygous dominant, okay? Homozygous recessive would be what? Hopefully Q squared, you got that. Okay, hetero means different. Remember that that one's a little special. 2PQ, the lethal allele, we're not talking about any special situation. You don't know if it's lethal or not. That's a dumb, that's a dumb answer. Okay, cool. So now let's go on and practice some math. Okay, so this says the recessive allele B occurs with a frequency of 0.8. Okay, so the recessive allele has a frequency of 0.8. So what does that mean? What letter are we dealing with here? The recessive allele, recessive recessive allele has a frequency of 0.8, okay? So that's basically saying that Q is equal to 0.8. That's what that tells you. In the population of crabs, K, okay, who cares? It's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So what is the frequency of homozygous dominant? How do we get homozygous dominant? What represents homozygous dominant? Homozygous dominant is represented by P squared. We want to know this. This is the information that we have. This is the information that we were asked for. Okay, so how do we get from one to the other? Well, we have this one equation, P plus Q equals one. We know that. If we know that P plus Q Point 0.8 is equal to 1, and we do uh, some math here, we know that P is equal to 0.2. Cool, are we done? P equals 0.2, is that it? 
Is that what this is asking for? No, it's asking you to square it. So P squared is equal to 0.2 squared. I'm that person on a test that's always going to do like one plus one in a calculator. Okay, so you just do 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, or you square it if you have the graphing calculator. So P squared is equal to 0 0.04. Hello, four. That is our final answer. That's what it's asking us. So for here, this is the answer that you would pick, okay? This is, like I got this off of Khan Academy and it shows you like all of the mistakes that you could have made if you're going through and doing that. I highly recommend going to uh, Khan Academy, typing in Khan Academy Hardy Weinberg practice and this link pops up and it's a four question quiz. Really great because it shows you if you made mistakes along the way, what you did. So this is exactly how we solved for it. I just solved it kind of slow so then you could understand the process, okay? So that's the answer. That's how you solve that type of question. Let's try another one. Okay, so in corn, purple kernels are dominant to yellow. Purple kernels are dominant to yellow. So that means purple are dominant, which means that yellow have to be recessive. Remember that this is dealing with P's and this is dealing with Q's. We don't know if it's squared or not based on the first sentence, but we do know that we got our P's and our Q's. P for purple in this case, that's simple, they're dominant. A random sample of 100 kernels is taken from a population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. It is found that nine kernels are yellow and 91 are purple. Okay, so let's look at the information that we have in front of us. We know that purple are dominant, okay? So which genotypes would give you a dominant outcome. Genotypes. Both of those genotypes are gonna be dominant, correct? They're both gonna show you the dominant trait, whereas this would be purple. And if we're dealing with yellow, hello, if we're dealing with yellow, we have little a, little a as our only genotype, right? So this 91 kernels are purple, which means that they could be this, or they could be this. And nine kernels are yellow, which has to be this. Okay, so that's what we know. So let's think about this even further. These nine kernels that are yellow are little a, little a, double recessive, homozygous recessive. What represents homozygous recessive in Hardy-Weinberg? Hopefully you just said Q squared. And again, let's see, I'm on page three. Q squared, homozygous recessive, little a, little a. You just have to memorize this. That's why I put it in here for you, okay? So this is where we are right here, okay. So we have that information, we know that. I haven't even read the question yet, okay? But the question says, what is the frequency of the yellow allele? What is the frequency of the yellow allele? It wants to know what's Q. We know what Q squared is. It's nine, it's nine what? It's nine out of 100 because that's the total, right? So if nine out of 100 is equal to Q, hello, is equal to Q squared, what do you have to do? Square root. Right, so you're gonna have the square root of 0.09 is gonna give you Q. Well, that just so happens to be 0 0.3. Again, calculators are a thing. It's asking us for the frequency of the yellow allele. It should be pretty low compared to the other one because you have 91 that are purple, okay? So that's gonna be what you put here. So we are correct. And again, this is all the possible answers. And if you got the wrong answers, it tells you kind of what you did. Okay, but we did homozygous recessive percentage, which is Q squared, is given. That's from the question. I didn't make that up. It says it in the question. Therefore, the frequency of the yellow allele, the recessive allele, is equal to Q. So all you have to do is square root to find your answer. That's how that one works. Let's try another one. Okay, so a population of sheep 
is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The allele for white wool, which you can see is dominant, capital, has a frequency of 0.19. And the allele for lowercase, so this is recessive, the black wool, has an allele frequency of 0.81. So this is telling us that P plus Q equals 1. P, dominant, is 0 0.19 plus Q, recessive, 0 0.81 equals to 1. That's correct. So let's see what it wants us to do. The percentage of heterozygous individuals. How do we get a heterozygous individual with Hardy-Weinberg standards? 2 P Q. So we know P, we know Q, so let's multiply them and then times 2, okay? So you're going to do 2 times P times Q, okay? Oops. In that case, we're going to have 2 times 0.19 times, stop, 0.81, okay? And I believe that that gives you 31%. Again, calculators are a thing. Are we right? We are right. 31%. Okay? So 2PQ is how we get our heterozygous. It asked for that. It gave us P. It gave us Q. You just multiply them times 2, and that's where you get your answer. Again, if you did it incorrectly, it shows you what you did incorrectly there, which is nice. Okay? This will be my last example. I'm also going to link the page that I pulled this from. Um, it's a National Math and Science Institute. Um, it actually has all the answers on there. What I would do is cover up the answers and try to solve it by yourself. And then it tells you how to solve it step by step. And they use this little symbol a whole bunch. And that means therefore. Just so you know, there, that little symbol is in there a lot. It's like, oh, if you know, Q equals 0.5, therefore P has to equal 0.5 because 0.5 plus 0.5 equals 1. Cool. Okay, so in a population that is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, 38% of the individuals are recessive homozygotes. Recessive homozygotes, what letter is that? Recessive homozygotes. Q squared. What is Q squared? 38%. So we know that 0.38 is equal to Q squared. That's what it told us right there. In a population of this many, okay, calculate the percentage of homozygous dominant and heterozygous. So it wants us to do what? It wants us to find homozygous dominant, which is P squared. And hetero, what is that? 2 P, Q. Again, I'm not just coming up with this. It's from the two equations. Remember that your two equations are P plus Q equals 1. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Okay? This is just something you have to have memorized. That's what that's saying. We have uh, this information. We're trying to find these two bits of information. Okay. So if we have Q squared, how do we get Q? Because it's very easy. this equation is very simple. So how do we get Q? You just square root each side. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to go to my little calculator. I have to turn it landscape for this. Okay, so I'm going to do the square root, which is, I'm just going to round. That's fine. Equals Q. Okay, cool. How do I get P? P plus what? Plus this. Equals 1. So then I just have to subtract Q from 1. So P is going to equal to roughly, roughly that, right? Okay, so then I like to just double check myself that if you do like point, uh, 0.616 plus 0.383, is it about 1? Yeah, it's 0.9999 repeating. Cool, that's fine. So we have Q, 
and we have P. Now, all we have to do is plug and chug to get these values. So if I do P squared, that's just going to be 0.383 squared. Okay, so 0.383, and I'm going to square it. So P squared is equal to 0 0.146. Mm, seven technically, but that's fine. I'll just add another six, that's fine. Okay, so that's P squared. So if I'm looking for two PQ, I'm just gonna do two times P, which we found right here, 0.383, and Q, which we found right here, 0.616, and that is going to equal, let's see, This is equal to 0 0.47, okay? So we know that these are the percentages that we just found, okay? So if you wanna double check, remember that the question gave us Q squared and Q squared is equal to 0.38. So I'm just gonna add all of those together because they should equal one, right? So I'm just gonna double check my work here because sometimes I make mistakes too. Yeah, that's 0.999 repeating. Okay, so just rounding errors. Okay, so these are our frequencies. So it wants to know these two frequencies, which we found, but also if it asks you for the number of individuals, how would you find that? If these are the percentages that we just found, how would you find the number of individuals? Well, it tells you how many are in the population, right? So wouldn't you just do 14,500 times that value? And that would equal your number. Um, I'm just gonna write all of this out. So you take the total times your percentage the total, this one it didn't ask you for, but just in case it did, I figured that I would just show you how to do it. Okay, so if you did 14,500 times 0.1466, you're gonna get about 2,125.7. Now you can't have 0.7 of an individual, but just rounding, right? 14,500 times 0.47, 6,815. And then you have 14,500 times 0.38, which gives you roughly 5,510, okay? So that's individuals. So remember, P squared is showing you AA. So that's how many individuals. That's the total actual number. This is the percentage. This is how many in that population, okay? So that's what I went through. Remember that this would be hetero individuals, and this one would be um, little a, little a individuals. And again, it gave you this information in the question. So that's how to solve all of these different types of Hardy-Weinberg equations, um, practice problems using the two equations. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and link the uh, worksheet that I pulled number four from right here. And remember the little, this sign means therefore. So if we had like 0.8 is equal to Q, therefore, 0.2 is equal to P because you have P plus Q equals one, right? That's what they do. Okay, so I hope that this helps a little bit. I'm going to try to edit this and get this up for you guys today. I'm sorry if you can hear my pen constantly bouncing off of my screen. Like I said, the normal way of record is not working today, which is fine. But here's the information. If you have any questions, please let me know on Remind.